Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the pathophysiology and the grades of hepatic encephalopathy. Let's begin with the pathophysiology. So when we are talking about hepatic encephalopathy, you should know that it has to do with liver failure. So in that case, we will see that nitrogenous waste products, which are supposed to be cleared or detoxified by the liver, builds up in circulation as the liver fails and as they build up in circulation they then tend to pass via the blood brain barrier into the brain where astrocytes clear it the clearing involves the convection of glutamate which is an amino acid in the brain into glutamine and glutamine has a high osmotic potential thereby creating an osmotic imbalance and this osmotic imbalance leads to the shift of fluid into the cell the resultant effect of that fluid shift is a cerebral edema leading to the manifestations of hepatic encephalopathy all right let's move ahead and look at the grades of hepatic encephalopathy you should know that there are four grades of hepatic encephalopathy grade one two three and four and also the higher the grade the worse the prognosis so let's begin with grade one for grade one the patient will have an altered mood or behavior then again they would have a reversed sleep pattern and what does that mean during the night most often individuals are supposed to sleep but such patients they tend to be more active in the night than the day meaning during the day they will be sleeping and during the night they will be active showing that their sleep pattern has been reversed that's what we call a reverse sleep pattern next one is constructional dyspraxia where you ask the patient to draw a five-pointed star Inability to draw this five-pointed star is termed as constructional dyspraxia. So you will see, for example, a known alcoholic with hepatic encephalopathy trying to draw the five-pointed star, having what? They will be having difficulty. You see them drawing a figure such as this as a five-pointed star. And in that case, that will be termed as constructional dyspraxia. Again, Another feature of grade 1 is poor arithmetic form where you, when you ask a patient to do basic arithmetic 1 plus 1 they are unable to tell you exactly what the answer will be. Then the next feature will be they have no liver flap or what you call asteresis. Then the question goes how then do you elicit asteresis or liver flap in such a patient? So you ask the patient to stretch forth the hand, close the eyes and clock the rigs backwards. You expect the rigs to be in a stationary motion, but with liver flap or asteresis, you will see the patient flapping the hand as if it is a bird flapping its wings. And if it happens like that, we call it flapping tremor or liver flap or asteresis. Let's move ahead and look at hepatic encephalopathy grade two. For hepatic encephalopathy grade 2, you will notice that the patient would have increasing drowsiness or lethargy. Another feature will be confusion or confused uh, speech. Slurred speech is another feature of grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy. For grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy, asteresis or liver flap may or may not be present. Then again, the patient exhibits inappropriate behavior or personality change for this particular feature you would have to ask a family member who has been around the patient for so long for the patient cannot tell you how he or she has had a change in behavior over the period that will do for grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy let's move ahead and look at grade 3 hepatic encephalopathy 
For grade 3 hepatic encephalopathy, the patient will be incoherent. And when they are talking, you will realize that their speech is incoherent. They will be restless. Stupor is another feature. And for grade 3 hepatic encephalopathy, liver flap or asteresis is always underlying, always present. Then finally, finally, grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy is characterized by coma. And once again, you should know that the greater the grade of hepatic encephalopathy, the worse the prognosis, meaning grade 4 will have the worst of prognosis as compared to the rest, followed by grade 3, followed by grade 2, followed by grade 1 in that manner. I believe we've learned something exciting. Kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and also comment the next concept you would like to see on my channel. Make sure to put on the notification bell so as to receive the updates at first hand. My name is Dr. Dell, and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.